In this video, I'm gonna talk about hand pain. I see a lot of patients with wrist, forearm limitations in my practice. And oftentimes, they're pretty predictable what the injuries are. In this video, we're gonna specifically talk about lateral hand pain or lateral forearm pain and a loss of grip strength. So if this sounds like what you're having, stay tuned. If this is your first front row video, welcome. So remember to go to the search bar, type in what you're looking for. We probably have you covered from head to toe. If you can't find something there that'll help your problem, let me know and maybe I'll make a video that talks about what you've got going on. In this video, we're gonna talk specifically about lateral hand pain and discomfort with gripping or with trying to go into extension. A lot of patients that like to do yoga or push-ups and they can't go into extension. So a loss of extension is a really common issue. However, sometimes it's fairly easy to treat. Let's first talk about the anatomy. Let's get oriented here. This is the left arm and he's got his palms up. This is a thumb and this is the pinky. If you're having thumb side pain, usually it's this scaphoid. That's a big issue. Imagine falling on an outstretched hand and jamming the scaphoid. If you're having a little bit more lateral pain, and it could be on the outside pinky side as well too, usually what you have going on is restrictions of this lunate, which is crescent shaped, which is why it's called lunate. The scaphoid means boat, and you can kind of see how it's shaped a little bit like a boat. I've already made a video on the thumb pain, so if you don't find it on the channel, let me know and I'll send you the link. In this video, we're gonna talk specifically about fifth digit or basically pinky side pain on the outside of the hand and maybe even to this lateral forearm as well too. First thing I do when I evaluate a hand or wrist pain in the clinic is try to determine if there's any big range of motion loss and strength loss. So I'll check flexion of the wrist, I'll check extension and usually extension is limited and a little bit of overpressure creates pain. It's important to know if the pain is pinky side or thumb side because it changes the emphasis of the carpal bone that we're working towards. Then I'll check ulnar deviation and radial deviation as well to see if there's limitations. Now we want to check strength. A simple and easy way to check strength without any fancy equipment is to literally pinch two fingers together, start with your pointer finger and try to separate it and get an idea of the level of strength between each one. If one of them is a little bit weak or you're having trouble touching, that could be indicative of some carpal irritation. Another way to do it is to grab a book, pinch between two fingers, and get an idea of what kind of force you can generate to hold that book up. Let's get oriented again. This is the left arm, palms down. This is the thumb, and this is the pinky. So we've established that there's maybe a loss of extension. There's some sort of lateral hand forearm pain and we're looking for the big culprit. The one we're interested in is the hamate and then the lunate, which is right back here. The hamate is easy to find. What you'll do is you'll come down in between the two fingers until you hit the junction and both the fifth and the fourth share the hamate. So you'll come down to the end, pop over, put deep pressure, Sometimes I'll cross my other hand over it and get an idea of how that moves, see if it's tender. Most of the time going into flexion won't be a problem, but when you try to go into extension, there'll be pain. You'll start to go into extension and when you start to feel a little tightness, you're gonna have your patient push down and basically flex the wrist. They're gonna contract the muscles and you're gonna hold it steady. And then when they relax, you'll put a little traction, which means you're gonna push you're gonna push down to create a little separation, push down, and then you're gonna glide it back into extension. And that's what that looks like. Once again, they'll get to a certain point. It might be a little painful. You might feel some restriction. They're gonna push down, hold it for five seconds, let it relax, traction it, and go into a little bit more extension. After we've got the hamate to move a little bit better, the next one we're after is the lunate. So from the hamate, just drop closer. You know you've gone too far if you're actually on the radius or the ulna. Then find out where that separation of the joint is and come back just a little bit and chances are you're on the lunate. And the lunate's gonna probably be very tender. Same thing again, pressure right on the lunate. You're just gonna check the mobility. First, we're gonna try to reestablish extension. So a little traction, so I'm pulling down on the arm and I'm working into extension. When I hit that barrier, I'm gonna have my patient flex the wrist down. I'm gonna resist it for five seconds. When they relax it, 
I'm going to go down further into extension. Once I've reestablished extension, then I'm going to work on a little bit of radial and ulnar deviation as well too to see how that proximal row of carpals glides between the ulna and the radius and reestablish any motion that feels a little tight or a little restricted while I'm putting a little bit of traction. So let's review. If you have thumb side pain, check the scaphoid. If the scaphoid is tender upon palpation, then you know the scaphoid is restricted in movement and we have to reestablish better motion. Remember, I've already done a thumb video and there'll be a link at the end of this one. This one talks more about pinky side pain or lateral hand and forearm pain. We'll check two different carpals. One is the hamate and then one is the lunate, which is just behind it. We've talked about how to access it here. Follow down the web space, pop up just a little bit. That's going to be the hamate. Check for motion, see if it's tender. Drop a little bit further up. Get onto the lunate. If the lunate is tender as well, then chances are both of those need to be mobilized. And once motion has been reestablished, you should have better extension of the wrist without as much pain. There you go, mobilizing the carpals. It's not really as difficult as it seems, but don't let the simplicity fool you because you can really get a lot of bang for your buck and even old injuries because falling on an outstretched hand is such a common injury and usually it locks up that proximal row or basically the carpals right underneath the ulna and the radius and the scaphoid and lunate are usually a problem. So if you have limited extension, share this video with anyone that you might know has that problem. If you have any questions, let me know and hopefully this helps and you'll feel better. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hit 10,000 subs by the end of 2020. If you have any questions, let me know.